So first question states that a circular queue has been implemented using a singly linked list where each node consists of a value and a single pointer pointing to the next node. We maintain exactly two external pointers front and rear pointing to the front node and the rear node of the queue respectively which of the following statement is or are correct for such a circular queue so that the insertion and deletion operation can be performed in order of one time and the statements are next pointer of the front node points to the rear node or the second statement is next pointer of the rear node points to the front node okay so uh, first of all, you need to understand that initially when we developed a queue, the logic that was used was last in, for, uh, first in, first out. That means this is the front of the queue and this is the rear of the queue and the elements, the if it is not a circular queue, it, it is a normal queue, then all the elements are enqueued from the rear end and they are deleted from the front so if if i have two ele three elements like this or i can say if elements like this then if i have to enqueue another element i'll in increase the rear pointer or increment the rear pointer and insert another element and in case i have to delete some elements suppose i have to delete three elements from the queue i will use the front pointer for deleting it so the queue would look like this now if this is the maximum capacity of the queue and we have reached a point where rear points to the last location and i have to insert another element in this case i won't be able to insert any other element because the rear is pointing to the last location and even if more space is available at the front more spaces available at the front i won't be able to insert new elements so this problem was solved by circular queue in which the elements are inserted and deleted in a circular manner so this is three four five and if you have to say six so initially if this is the pointer that is pointing to the front and this is the pointer that is pointing to rear all right and now if i delete elements one two and three the circular queue would look like this three four five and six so the front pointer would be here and rear pointer would be here in this case even if i have to insert more elements i can insert them here because now our queue is circular so what we have done indirectly we have made the rear pointer point to the next node and the node that was initially uh, pointed by front so in circular queue if we are implementing circular queue using a singly linked list in which we have nodes where each node contains a value and a pointer pointing to the next node then if this is the front and this is the rear we must maintain a pointer from the rear to the initial front or to the uh, locate next node that will form a circular linked list so that a circular queue is possible if we uh, see there is no use of uh, putting the next pointer of front node to the rear node if we do this in that case also see if we add a pointer from here to here to this node then if we have to insert more elements at the rear end i would not be able to do that just like i did in a circular queue implementation right but if i add a pointer from the rear node to this node and i have deleted the front elements then i would be able to insert new elements here so obviously the statement out of the two which is correct is the next pointer of the rear node points to the front node so only second option is correct and the b part is the correct one now coming to the second question of this lecture it is given that G is an undirected graph with n vertices and 25 edges 
such that each vertex of g has degree at least 3 then the maximum possible value of n is now this is a question that makes use of the formula for the sum of degrees of vertices we know that the formula for sum of the degrees of vertices of a graph where vi i ranging from 1 to n is equal to twice the number of edges so n is the number of vertices we, we don't know and e is 25 that is given to us and we are given that degree of each vertex degree of each vi is greater than or equal to 3 that means if we write a uh, summation of degree of vertices vi i going from 1 to n this value would be either equal to 3n that means 3 into the number of vertices that would be the minimum case or the summation value would be greater than 3n now this was the first equation this is the second equation putting this value or equating these two i get the value 2e is greater than equal to 3n this gives me n less than equal to twice of number of edges divided by 3 so n is less than equal to 2 into 25 by 3 which is equal to okay 50 by 3 and n would approximately come out to be 16 here all right so this is how we solve this question we just made use of one formula and the rest is given to the given to you in the question so the formula that you have to remember is for the sum of the degree of the vertices is equal to twice the number of edges the question says that the height of a tree is the length of the longest root to leaf path in it the maximum and the minimum number of nodes in a binary tree of height 5 are. Alright, so first of all, height of 5 means a level of 6. Okay, and why is it so? Because when we draw any tree, suppose we have a binary tree like this, which is completely filled or it is a perfect binary tree. So, the since the height is defined as the root to leaf path, therefore, from root to root the length of the path would be 0 okay so at the root we consider the height equal to 0 because from root to itself the height would be or the path length would be 0 now from root to this node the path length would consist of a single edge so height is equal to 1 therefore further levels would have height of height equal to 2 then height equal to 3 and so on okay so this is height 0 but this is level 1 all right and this is level 2 level 3 and so on so if we say height of 5 we actually mean level of 5 plus 1 which is 6 all right so we have to tell what would be the maximum and minimum number of nodes in a binary tree of height 5 now one thing you need to remember is that whenever you have to find the maximum number of nodes you need to completely fill the tree that means each node should have maximum possible number of children okay since it is a binary tree therefore each node can have a maximum of two children and when each node has two children every node has two children we say it is a as a perfect binary tree so in case of a perfect binary tree we would have the maximum number of nodes that are possible for any uh, binary tree of a particular given height okay so if the binary tree is a perfect binary tree then we'll have the maximum number of nodes and how many such nodes would be there for a height for a tree with height h the number of nodes that the maximum number of nodes that are possible are 2 raised to power h plus 1 minus 1 since we know that level is equal to h plus 1 okay level 1 is equal to height of 0 plus 1 similarly we can say that at height h the total number or the maximum number of nodes that we can have 
is either equal to 2 raised to power h plus 1 minus 1 or it is equivalent to 2 raised to power l minus 1. Alright, because l is equal to h plus 1. Therefore, if we have height equal to h equal to 5, the maximum nodes that we can have in such a binary tree is 2 raised to power 5 plus 1 is 6 minus 1. 2 raised to power 6 would be 64. 64 minus 1 is 63. Alright. So, when are the maximum number of nodes possible? In case of a perfect binary tree. Now, when would be the minimum number of nodes possible? Minimum number of nodes would be possible in case of a skewed binary tree. And this skewed binary tree can either be left skewed or it can be right skewed. And what do I mean by skewed tree? That means the tree is either completely on the left hand side or all the nodes are towards the left hand side or all the nodes are towards the right hand side. Okay. So in this case, the total height or the total level would be a clear indication of the nodes that I can have. So basically, we I am putting a minimum number of node at each level. That is, I am filling each level with a single node. And if I have height 5, then the total number of nodes that I would have in a skewed binary tree would be equal to 6. Okay, and why is it so? Because this is height 0, this is height 1, this is height 2, this is height 3 and if you see how many levels have been there what, level 1 level 2 level 3 level 4 so basically if at level 4 i'm getting four nodes therefore at level 6 i would get six nodes thus the answer to this question is six in the case of minimum number of nodes okay so you have to remember when maximum number of nodes occur and when minimum number of nodes occur and what is their value. So the correct value is option A or 63 and 6. Okay. Now proceeding to the second question. The second question says which of the following is or are correct in order traversal sequences of binary search tree and you are given four sequences and you are given the options to mark. Now please remember that a major property of in order traversal or in order sequence is that the in order traversal always gives an increasing sequence or I should say a non decreasing sequence all right a non decreasing sequence of numbers no matter it is a binary search tree, a perfect binary search tree or any kind of tree in which in order is possible. So in order will always result in an increasing or non-decreasing sequence of values. Alright, so in case of in order, the only thing you need to see is that if the sequence is written in ascending order or non-decreasing order, it is a perfect or it is a correct in order sequence all right so if we are given the first option as 3 5 7 8 15 19 and 25 yes this is perfectly increasing order so yes this is a correct in order this is a candidate for a in order sequence okay now coming to the second one 5 8 9 12 and 10 okay you can stop here because this is not an increasing order therefore it is not a correct in order traversal or in order traversal sequence all right now coming to the third one 2 7 10 8 this is also incorrect the fourth one is 4 6 7 9 18 20 and 25 okay this is also perfectly increasing order so the correct options are 1 and 4 and the option that you have to mark is 1 and 4 that is option a so this is the only property you need to remember in case of in order traversal to find out if they are valid sequences or not all right so that's all for today's lecture if you understood both these questions please like our video and let us know in the comment section below that how did you find this video because your feedback is really valuable to us 
subscribe to the channel of easy engineering classes for more tutorials in this preparation series and press the bell icon so that you don't miss any upcoming video that we upload in future thank you for watching stay tuned good luck for your exam